gentlemen, welcome to part two of Clarity and Closure of the Viewer's Comments, number six. Well, I think I labeled it 6.5. Uh, the reason why this is separate is because for some reason, the technology, the platforms that I have that I use to create these videos, the last part of the video with uh, the part you're going to see now would upload to YouTube with no audio. So what I had to do is I had to split the video and uh, see if I could upload it separately and get the audio to work in the separate one because it's, to, in my opinion, it's too good not to share with everyone. So that's what this is and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Welcome to part 6.5 of Clarity and Closure of the viewers' comments. Keeper of the Keen Bean says, First note on what you went into about the claim of the live life. Just P's query. The fee for freight aboard the bills of the lading is what the current fee for the claim of life is for. So they're talking about the fee that people charge for a claim of the live life, meaning whether it's $100, $200, $300, whatever it is. That's what he's talking about. But that's not true what they're saying. They, they're not... That, that's not what's going on there at all. The fee for the freight for the bills of the lading is the $1 stamp that you put on the claim of the live life. That is the fee for freight. You can do it yourself. You don't need to pay someone else to do it for you. I mean, if that's your choice, if you want to throw someone 200 bucks to make a claim of the live life for you, I mean, that's up to you. But you don't have to do that. The fee for freight is what you pay to care to what it says, the feet for the freight aboard the bills of the lading. The bill of the lading is the live life claim. You put the stamp on it. You can do it. You don't need someone else to do it for you. So I don't think that Keeper really comprehends those postal mechanics right there, but hopefully I just educated them. David said a lot of things that were, are not correct. Got a lot of people spun into the harvesting traps of the fiction. Keeper, the keen beam. <clears throat> How do you know that? Did you know David personally? I don't know if you did or you didn't. I know that I communicated with him on the phone during the last year of his life. I've communicated with many people that knew him personally. I've been doing this for five years. Um, the only thing that I look at as far as correctness goes, is David's grammar. And I can with 100% certainty say that I can find errors, grammatical errors on every single page of his textbook. I can find grammatical errors on every single page of his website. I was correcting his website before he died. I have been in communication with him. I was sending him the errors and he was fixing them on his website back in 2017. I have documented this in my journey video series, which you're more than welcome to watch. I don't know how much research you've done into this or how many of my 400 plus videos you've watched, but I didn't just come into this yesterday. I've been doing this for quite some time. And I've been in personal contact with David Wynn Miller, with Russell J. Gould, and with Mark Sean Christopher. I was there when these things were happening. I'm not sure where you were, what you were doing, but I do have my own, you know, personal knowledge of these things. Got a lot of people spun into the harvesting traps of the fiction. Well, that happens when people don't know what it is they're doing. Not sending in a claim of the life in for authorization through the Title IV flag and corporate structure is a serious mistake. That is not true. That is not true at all. Because again, keeper of the keen beaner, I've been doing this for five years. I have been 100% successful with all of my postal court claims that I've made using my knowledge as authority and correct grammar. I have stopped the trespass for other contract parties when I've taken on cases. You have to know what it is you're doing to do it. However, I do know of people that have gotten in trouble who have tried to use Russell J. Gould as an authority. For example, I can show you a video of Colin Mitchell 
Colin Smith, I, I did a reaction video to it where he gets pulled over by the police and he mentions that Russell is the, the I don't even know the title, chief federal judge of the Supreme Court and he holds up a document and he ends up in jail. I, I mean... It sounds to me as though you don't have the whole story. I don't know for sure, um, but it, that's what it sounds like. Whether those spin-ups were deliberate on David's part or not, in the end, he did not honor the contract, got more people harvested, and was more, more for his little banker buddies, high-profile characters than he was the people as a 92nd degree mason. That sounds exactly like something that David's student, Russell J. Gould, would say. And it sounds like you're repeating something that you've heard rather than something you know to be true and can certify as a fact. Listen, think about this, Kane Beaner. All those years that David was supposedly making contracts with high-profile banker buddies, right? Are you saying that Russell didn't know anything about it? And then suddenly when David died, all of a sudden Russell knew about it? And now all of a sudden Russell's coming forward and, and letting the world know that David did this, that, and a third and was wrong and was leading people the wrong way? Are you telling me he didn't know about it before? Are you telling me that... David has this book that Russell said is not correct, right? Every single director's party that David and Russell did, that book was there. They were selling it. So Russell didn't know that book was not correct until after David died. Russell never spoke up, never said one word while David was alive, that things were not correct. Until that goofy court martial thing that he did in the autumn of uh, 2017, which is goofy. The reason why I say it's goofy is because he military court marshals Colin David Eiffelwin Cola Miller when Colin David Eiffelwin Cola Miller was never in the military. Show me a contract that shows Colon David Eiffelwin Colon Miller in the military. Adjective, adjective, pronoun. David Wynn Miller may have been in the military, but not Colin David Eiffel and Wynn Colin Miller. Do you see what I'm saying? These are all basic logic things. I mean, I heard the same stories that you heard. The difference is I took the time to actually speak to people who knew both David and Russell. I took the time to do research and I took the time to learn the grammar. The most important thing is to learn the grammar. Because once you learn the grammar, then it gives you a lens with which to look at everything else with. It's the most important thing. You got to know the grammar. I say this like repeatedly, ad nauseum. You can call me a troll. I've interacted with you prior to this. Okay. Isn't that funny? that you have not credentialed yourself or even given a correct name. All this time, you've hidden behind this name, Keeper of the Keen Bean. That tells me a lot about you, that you won't, even now, I'm reacting to something, I, I'm answering or directing my Kuliana to a nom de guerre, and you're comfortable with that. You're comfortable with that because you have not come forward and identified or credentialed yourself. So that tells me a lot about you. I will humble myself here and say that my quantum grammar is, and he has a garbage can, or she has a garbage can there, because I have been committing my time to other aspects of safeguarding and educating the public. What is more important than quantum grammar if this is the basis of why you are even commenting on my YouTube channel? So you just admitted that you don't know correct sentence structure. So therefore, you do not have a position with which to say Russell J. Gould is correct or not correct. You don't know, because you don't know the grammar. The grammar is the most important thing. So you've chosen, this is by my perception, you have chosen, Keeper of the Keen Bean, to, to participate 
with a corporate structure based upon the words of someone that you probably don't even know. I mean, if you do know Russell personally, more power to you. But what you don't know is the grammar. And I don't know anybody that Russell has taught that knows the grammar. I really don't. Not even the the Muriel lady doesn't know the grammar. Um, and I've proven this in videos. I've shown you. If the grammar is not the most important thing, then what is? As far as claiming some sort of authority over grammar. What you're teaching has holes in some spots. How would you know it has holes if you don't know the grammar? How would you know that? You can say what you're teaching has holes. Where are the holes? Show me the holes, Keeper of the Keen Bean. First, show me your knowledge level and then show me the holes. I'm more than open to correct any grammatical thing I'm doing if you see something wrong. But how can you see something wrong if your quantum grammar is garbage? I've been doing this for five years, over 20,000 hours, 100% successful performances with my document contract, Postal Vessel Court venues. And here you are <laughs> telling me I have holes. <laughs> That's one reason I haven't committed to learning from you. For example, the bracketing of the negative context words are no, non-now time scenarios. I get it when it can seem nonsensical when the whole text is bracketed to begin with, but it's more from my own practice. What does that have to do with anything? Like, really? If it's for your own practice, then who gives a crap? That's yours, not mine. I will admit my mistake in hyphenating how it goes. I didn't say there was a mistake in hyphenating how it goes, Keeper the King Bean. I said, how can that be a fact? What is your correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, closure on the word how? We need a finite mean for that. We need a finite mean for goes. G-O-E-S. What's your finite mean for that? Every fact must have closure and have a finite mean for it. Right? Right? Because the most important thing is the grammar and the closure. So how can you have a fact like how hyphen goes? Like I said, I'm still learning. I'm, I'm dot, dot, dot. I'll consider contacting you because of how humble you are. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And this goes into the other thing I was saying. Someone, if someone's out there telling you how nice they are, how mean they are, how humble they are, how smart they are, then that probably means they're the opposite of that because it's up to other people to tell you what you are or aren't, not you. And this person just told me I'm humble. And I'm humbled by that. I really appreciate it. I really do. This is someone that that we're on opposing sides of an issue, okay? You could say that. And here they are telling me that I'm humble. They didn't have to do that. So much gratitude for that, keeper of the keen beaner, whoever you are. I appreciate it. And I return the compliment in saying that I appreciate you offering that to me because that shows me that you also have humility. And it also shows me that my initial sensation was correct in that you are questioning the Russell J. Gould construct that you're in. Even though perhaps you're still, as you say, spun up in, in the drama, maybe if you come to a quiet spot in your life and you really think about it and you take the time to learn the grammar, you will see it for what it is. You'll, you'll, get, you'll have a different perception of it than you do now. Once you know what it is you're talking about. And once you're able to see exactly the condition of state of Russell's grammatical performances. I've kind of come at you sideways here a couple times. Ah... So you admit you've come on here sideways. So it means you haven't come straight on to me. You've come sideways. Kind of underhanded. So that's, that's a little strange. Why would you feel the need to do that? The way you've responded reflects good potential in my perspective. I am just looking for genuine leaders. 
Unfortunately, King Bean, I'm not a leader. I have no volition to be a leader. And I'm not looking for people who want leaders. My whole thing is I teach autonomy. If you want to lead yourself, this is the place to be. I can teach you the grammar, and then you can become your own authority. You don't need Jason. You don't need Russell. You don't need David. You don't need Mark. You don't need anybody but the keen beaner. You're your own authority. Knowledge comes from authority. That's what I teach. There is no leader. I can be a guide, but guide implies consent, right? Leader implies followers, and I definitely don't want followers. I'll leave that for Russell or whoever else likes to have that type of thing. To me, that's like an ego thing. And start pushing forth the unique solutions that are currently on the table, as well as help to create our own unique solutions and bring them to the table to mitigate or bring to a full stop what these neo Malthusians technocrats are pushing. Because once these characters and the whole transhumanist way of thinking gets moved into the backdrop, the people can start looking at improving the quality of life for fellow mankind. <clears throat> when the people quit giving their energy to the fiction, like I'm not doing right now, we can truly work for the betterment of all through concepts like Ubuntu philosophy and the Venus Project paradigm rather than transhumanist dystopias. Again, I'll consider talking to you on your level geometric playing field, but I'm not convinced your name is Colin Jason I. Matthew. You spelled my name wrong, by the way, so you're right. I'm not Jason Matthew Glass because you've spelled my name wrong. The least you could do, Keen Beaner, is keep correctness in my name and not Klaus Winther. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, let's keep reading. Operating with the volition to tarnish the construct formerly known as the Unity States of America, Unity States of our World Corporation. What gets me is your belief that everything Russell and David set up is fiction. It's not belief, King Beaner. I'm talking about the grammar construct has mistakes all over it. Therefore, in a grammatical sense, it is fiction. It's adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. Because they use incorrect positionals, right? They use particles of negation in their facts. It's, and I've proven it multiple times. Now, I see that they use this word, these, this name, Klaus Winther. Now, I have a vague recollection of this name from a few years ago of an individual that contacted me. They're from overseas, and their name was Klaus Winther. And I remember some kind of commotion about him selling live life claims for $300 or something. I don't know because I don't, again, I don't affiliate with people like that who charge money for claim of the live life. And that's what he was doing. And so I feel like I've had some run-ins with him, uh, but I immediately broke bulk and jettisoned them from my construct. So... It was a very short-lived thing because from my position, this Klaus Winther individual uh, violated the terms and conditions of, of my vessel. And so pff, I kicked him out. I become cognizant that any further correspondence with you gives you my energy and ultimately feeds what you're doing here with this channel. You're providing educational, to put it another way, you're providing educational content for my viewers. I can respect you for doing your best to get the grammar out there and help people comprehend, but you've created what I see to be a swirling effect where mankind as a collective is going. What? You've created what I see to be a swirling effect where mankind as a collective is going. Well, that's your perception. I have no idea what that means. As I stated, I'm here to teach autonomy. And I've been very successful with it. And I can only attest to my own personal successes with correct sentence structure. I've never once failed with it. I've been successful. I've never had to walk into um, a place that I didn't want to be because I was able to stop the trespass using correct sentence structure and using the Title IV flag under my own authority. I don't own the flag. 
I don't claim an ownership of the flag at all. I use the flag as it represents correct sentence structure. And I know correct sentence structure and have closure on it. Therefore, I use the flag. I can prove it. And that's the bottom line of the psychology of correct sentence structure. You have to be able to prove what you claim. And I do. Especially with bashing on Russell and what you see to be his cult. I don't think I'm particularly bashing Russell. I am calling his grammar to the carpet in that his grammar is not correct. And if you're going to claim some sort of authority over correct sentence structure, you have to know what it is you're talking about, right? Regardless of what he has or hasn't experienced, the grammar is the most important thing. And if you're going to tell me that the grammar is not the most important thing in a correct sentence structure construct, then I don't know what to tell you. I don't know where your head's at. I really don't. And it is a cult. It is a cult in the sense that he has followers that don't question anything that he does. Don't ask for proof of anything that he's done. He claims to have been through this, that, and the third. He claims this title, that title. Where's the proof? If these things all really happened in 1999, then has life gotten better for everybody since 1999? Or has it gotten worse? It's just simple logic. I think it's really selfish, but hey, maybe I'm projecting a little bit of my own inner unacknowledged crap onto you. Klaus, if you don't mind me calling you that. Well, actually, I do mind calling you calling me that because that is not my correct name. But you don't even know my correct name. You can't even spell it. Even though it's on this channel literally hundreds of times spelled out in the correct manner, you can't even find the decency or consideration to spell my name correct. I don't even know your correct name. So... Right there is an unleveling of the geometric level plane field. You're not even, you are, you're coming at me sideways, as you said. I have the tendency to ramble and babble in fiction. Fair enough. I continue to participate with the fiction for the reason of keeping myself in the space of knowing where the general public is at their thinking. If I have myself too far, I think you need two O's on that too. Far grounded in the fact, it gets difficult. If I have myself too far grounded in the fact, it gets difficult for the lower vibrational connections to be made to insist in getting them to comprehend the facts for themselves. King Beaner, you don't even know the facts because you don't know the grammar. You said yourself your grammar is trash. So how do you even know what a fact is? The logical cognitive dissonance in this comment is staggering. On the last note here, you can call what Russell has substantiated fiction well, substantiated is no contract. And you can call him a totalitarian dictator. Yes, he is a dictator. Did I say totalitarian? I don't know if I said that or not. But you're only lying to yourself. How do you know what I'm doing? If you ever decide to learn the uh, grammar, King Beaner, you will know that it's a big no-no not to make a claim for someone else. That's a trespass. Chief calls it for what it is, has made the treaties he created in through the drogue law, factually holds the titles he's claiming. Anybody can hold the title on paper, King Bean, or just like you can claim the title of Keeper of the King Bean. Doesn't mean anything if you don't perform on it. I humbly ask you to completely reconsider your thinking about Russell and the folks over there in the quantum venue or whatever name. <sighs> I have done that very many times already, King Bean. I have. If you don't know my story, I have been in contact with Russell J. Gould. From 2017 until the beginning of 2020, we emailed back and forth. We exchanged phone numbers, okay? I have experience in this. I have communicated with him. I have communicated with his lackeys, his messenger boys and girls. And all of them come at me sideways like you do. They all act the same way. They're all suspect. And at this point in time, I am so glad at one point, I did want to come and join her with Russell, and I did want to uh, become an ally of his on a geometric level playing field. But for whatever reason, he didn't want that. He's not about equality. Uh, that's, in my opinion, 
my humble opinion, it's the whole reason why after David died, suddenly Russell found his voice. And suddenly Russell began saying those things that he said about David. And then all of a sudden, took the grammar and tried to bottleneck it, tried to take control of it, and tried to get people right from the get-go to basically bow down and bend the knee to him. Whereas when David was alive, no one had to do that. Everyone could just use the grammar, and uh, it was fine. But then Russell, after David died, now then Russell was, it was like, bam, tried to change everything. I'm a small fry compared to who you should really be inviting to establish a geometric level playing field, Russell. That's already happened, as I just came bean. It's already happened. There's already been invitations. There's already been communications, repeated communications. And I'm not the one that violated a drogue timeline. I'm not the one who is with the void performances. It ain't me, babe. Then you guys could potentially reconcile who's with the fraud fiction and who's with the fact. It comes down to the grammar, Kane Beaner. It comes down to the grammar. Learn the grammar and then you don't need me. You don't need Russell. Kane Beaner will be able to decide who's correct and who's not. You don't need anyone else. Bringing full correctness to the world for them to consider themselves. Correctness is already here. You just have to want to participate with it and learn it, which you haven't. I keep bringing it back to the grammar because that's what I'm all about. You have not learned the grammar, so therefore, how can you even know what a fact is? I'll still consider doing a video call with you, but I implore you to set terms with Russell and bring him on. If Russell wants to communicate with me, he knows where I am. He has my email. He even has my phone number, okay? <laughs> That's how it was left on the table. All right. I've already been through this. I don't know. I mean, I guess you're not privy to that. Of course, how would you be? So I'm telling you right now, I've already been through this circus. And it is a circus. And I don't want to be involved in that guy's circus. It's chaos. From point A to point B to point Z, it's chaos. And I don't need chaos or drama. To be fair, though, I'm sure he will likely want the full recording of the correspondence for himself as well. This could either be... See, here's the thing, though. How do people that follow Russell J. Gould, how do they get the, the thought that they can speak for him, what he would want or not want? Like, I see all these people speaking for Russell. It's just so weird to me. You know, in hindsight, too, even, you know, people talking like they know what he would want or not want. This can be either go bad for one or good for both. I don't give a shit one way or the other. I really don't. If the latter, not just the both of you, but the world. The world, have you ever parsed the world, King Bean? I highly recommend parsing the word world. Go back to the earliest nativity root meaning of it. And, uh... <laughs> You'll see what it really means. And it comes down to what I've always said from the beginning. If people want things to get better for themselves, then they have to take autonomy over themselves. Because when you parse the word man, okay, I'll give it away. When you parse the word world, it comes back to the word man. So if you want to correct the man, if you want to correct the world, you have to correct the man. It comes from each of us individually. That's how I look at it. You don't need Jason. You don't need Russell. You don't need Mark. You don't need David. You just need King Beaner to correct King Beaner. Period. End of story. I know even my Babel grammar isn't correct, but appreciate you bearing with me. Gratitude. Well, thank you and gratitude to you for the comment. And wow, that was a long one. And so I'm going to wrap this up. Again. The offer's there. JasonMatthewG17 at gmail.com. Keen Beaner. But one thing you will have to do is you have to provide your correct name. Your correct punctu punctuated live life claim name if you have a live life claim. To establish, to begin to establish a geometric level clean field if you want to come aboard my vessel. 
That's the terms and conditions. And again, if Russell wants to come aboard my vessel, that's the same thing. He would have to contact me via jasonmatthews17 at gmail.com and request to board my vessel in the same manner. That's how it works. That's how contract works. Thanks for joining me, everybody. It's been a lively one, huh? And uh, we'll see you next time. Salud.